Okay, so today I'd like to go over a motherboard that's recognizing the battery, it's charging the battery, but it won't run off of the battery, and I want to go over what it is that could cause this and why that is. This is going to be a little bit more of an advanced video compared to the previous videos I've done, so I'd highly suggest that you read my, over my older videos on battery detection, on charging the battery, before you get to this one, because if you haven't really been following along, this may not make as much sense to you. So, now... What's going on here is a pretty simple problem. So the first power rail that has to turn on in the machine is PP3V42 underscore G3 hot. That turns on the SMC, and that allows the machine to actually turn on and function. Without that power rail, it's not going to work. Now, if it recognizes the battery, if my computer recognizes the battery, I know that my SMC data lines are okay, and all is good there. If it's charging the battery, I know that my current sensing circuits are working. So if all my current sensing circuits are working, I know that I don't have to look there. So what parts of the machine are powered differently from the battery than off of the charger. And the answer here is going to be the PP3V42 circuit. Now this is the circuit that has to turn on first, right? And this circuit turns on off of PPDCN for the charger. Now what if you're not turning the computer on using the charger? What if you're turning it on using the battery? Well, the battery's power is created from PPBUSH G3 hot. So you may want to have it turn on from PPBUSH G3 hot. Now here's where this starts to get a little bit confusing. Now, the charger over here is going to create PPBUSH G3 hot. So if the 18 volts from the charger goes through here and the PPBUSH G3 hot voltage from the battery goes through there, then you're going to wind up having both go through there when the battery is plugged in. Because keep in mind, even if you don't have a battery plugged in, even if no battery is plugged in at all, the charger creates PPBUSH G3 hot. So PPBUSH G3 hot is the voltage that the battery is providing the computer. If the battery is not plugged in, then U7000 is going to create PPBUSH G3 hot. So let's just go over to that section of the schematic over here so I can show you what I'm talking about. PPBUSH G3 hot is one of the main system lines that most of the system runs off of. And PPBUSH G3 hot is created by this buck converter over here. If you don't know what a buck converter is, you should go over my many videos where I talk about that. I'm not going to get into that in this video because this one's a little bit more advanced. So PPBUSH G3 hot is going to be created by the buck converter. Now, if the buck converter is not working because the charger is not attached, then instead of PPBUSH G3 hot coming from the buck converter, which is coming from the, from the charger, you can see up here where it's from adapter, it's going to, instead, it's going to come from the battery. So the battery will provide PPBUSH G3 hot. Now, the problem that's going to happen in the system if the battery and the charger are plugged in without any type of slick circuitry like here, is that you're going to have the battery, the, the charger at 18 volts is going to go through. The charger is going to create PPBUSH G3 hot, which will also go through to the input of the circuit, and you're going to get something that goes poof. So what you have here is a little diode, set of diodes, so that the whole idea here is that one of these is going to go, but not both of them are going to wind up going over here. And you also have... Now, these resistors, so in, you know, in case something happens, if there's some surge, or you plug in some knockoff bullshit battery or some knockoff bullshit charger, that uh, this is not going to blow up. So, remember, this machine works off of the charger, and every function of the machine works, but off of the battery, it doesn't. It recognizes the battery, which is how I know my SMC is good. Don't touch the SMC. It recognizes and charges the battery, which means my current sensing is good. Don't touch the current sensing circuitry. So, just to go over this again, uh, let's see if this schematic is going to have... The, here we go. So see, the SMC talks to the battery charger and the battery. If the SMC is bad, it won't see the battery and it won't tell it to charge. Also, the charging circuit has current sensing. So this is current sensing over here. And this, if there's anything wrong with that, it's not going to charge my battery. It charges my battery, so I know that's good. So what this narrows it down to is most likely it's going to be this resistor over here that allows PPBUSH G3 hot to power my, uh, my U6990, which creates PP3V42. So let's see where R6920 is. So let's just open myself a board view software here. This is an 820-3208 motherboard. Let's look for R6920. And that's going to be over here. Now, let's go over to the microscope so that I can see what it is that that looks like. Hmm. Open broadcaster is being silly. Wait, Open Broadcaster is plugged into my other microscope, which I, so I, I switched microscopes and I bought this complete pile of garbage, the OM99 from Amano. Don't buy this thing. They advertise it as better than the 2300S. It's not even it's split prism or simulfocal. That means that I'm going to be doing all the work in this video using one eyepiece, which is a downgrade to what I was doing almost uh, six months ago. It's a total piece of crap. The people at Omano suck for selling me this because I asked them specifically what the differences were in the models. 
and they not once brought up that I would be back to soldering like a cyclops. So this job is going to suck, but what are you going to do? I'm used to being screwed over by most suppliers and manufacturers that I buy stuff from. I got to pay a restocking fee and return shipping to send this shit back, even though I very clearly emailed them to ask about the differences, be inquired about it beforehand, so I may just wind up living with it. You might have also noticed with the camera before that you may have noticed that this thing is being held together by fucking tape. That's because when you spend $1,600 to $1,700 on a microscope, see this? See this shit over here? I, you send $1,600, $1,700 on a microscope, they send you screwed up threads. So the thread on the adapter that allows the LED light to screw into the bottom over here, that piece, uh, the threads are destroyed. So I had to use painter's tape to get that attached. Seven, almost $1,700 for this thing. So I would strongly suggest, I'm going to be doing a video where I compare the 2300S to this. If you want a microscope, go to Amscope. Do not waste your time on microscope.com. Do not buy stuff from them. Uh, they will tell you one thing. They will send you something that doesn't do that. You will have to pay a restocking fee to send it back. It's a fucking bullshit waste of time and money and hassle. So, anyway. You, by the way, you guys tell me if you think this microscope looks better than what I was using before. I don't think it does, but if it does, you know, if you really think it does, at the very least, I can feel better about wasting $1,700. The reason I got this is that my assistant could have her own microscope. So this over here is the resistor from the charger. So this over here is this from the charger. Now let's look at this one, R6920. So R6920 is going to be the one right next to it. Eh. See that? That's nasty. That's nasty. That is nasty. That's gross. Fuck that thing. So we're going to get rid of that. Yeah, well, I'm such a dumbass man. Isn't it? This is going to be a great idea. I'm going to upgrade my microscope instead of buying the same one. Instead of getting one that I know is actually good, let's ask them about what I can get if I spend more money. No. No bad idea. I was going to give my receptionist, the 2300S, so that I could have this one for myself. I should have just bought another 2300S. Why change what works? Why give microscope.com a fucking third chance to send me some shit that doesn't work? I am a dumbass, man. Because again, it's, you're not a dumbass when you buy it once and it doesn't work the way it's supposed to. You're a dumbass when you know that every time you go to microscope.com that you don't get what you pay for and you keep fucking buying from it. Because ah, the 1030 I got had a fucked up prison. The 2300 I got had a screwed up stand. And this one. Like, I, I can't believe I'm back to doing these videos out of one eye. That is just... This is silliness. So now we have to find that on another board. And of course, it is stolen from most of my other boards. <sighs> Here we go, I found one. Okay, so we're going to steal this from the donor board. Uh, uh, come back here, come back here and then put it on here. Again, you notice I didn't, I didn't measure that resistor. I saw no point to measuring that resistor. I mean, it had a, you could see the little hole in the middle of it, and when you see that hole in the burn, why waste the battery in my multimeter? It's just a waste of multimeter battery to even turn it on to see if that's good, when it looks like what it did look like. So now we're just going to touch it up a little, so I'm going to have some flux, some Amtec 559 flux over here.
and my my curvy tip, which got a little. It was a casualty of the Baku video where I that I uploaded. You can see that it doesn't look as nice as it used to. So there we go. And now let's just go over it one more time since there's no more excess solder and flow it into place so that it sits wherever it's supposed to sit on the pads. Surface tension will be very helpful here. See? Nice and straight. It's exactly where it's supposed to be. Now, as always, I'm not going to fix this stuff without showing you whether or not it actually works. So let me just turn off this loud gear over here. And let's see if this thing will turn on off of the charger. So, roll up my spool. Yeah, hey, I actually had this thing on all along. Damn it. Didn't want to waste multimeter battery on that. I have my Omano microscope repair kit over here. And, don't want to board in the side. This is, my, this is the machine that we are working on today. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up the battery and see if it'll turn on off of it. Because before it wouldn't turn on off of the battery and, well, obvious reasons why that was the case. And let's see what happens now. So all I'm really going to plug, I already have the fan plugged in. I'm going to plug in the keyboard and the battery. I know everything else works fine on this machine. Everything else tested just fine and dandy. See, R6920. So hopefully that made sense to you, and hopefully this has helped you with a new type of problem. So this is, again, charging battery, battery recognition, but won't work off of the battery. One of the things you should think about is, is the link between the battery and one of the power supplies that's powered off of some, where, where there's a different way of it being powered, is it broken. That didn't make much sense because I'm tired. Uh, there are, like, look for a power supply that can be powered by two different types of inputs. And if one of them's a battery and one of them's the charger, and it's not working off of the battery, eh, you know, just a little bit of common sense here.